Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Yesterday we made a video about the, the rapist and the rape. And you know, as usual, Muslims, they get so upset. I mean, look at this. Those Muhammadan, I hope my voice is coming good and clear from your side. Let me know, please, if you have any problem. Those Muhammadan, they said clearly that your Bible teach that the rapist should marry the woman he raped her. And they said this is disgusting. The second we showed them that it is Muhammad who did rape women, some of them he married and the rest he did not, they start going in denial. I mean, aren't you the one who said this is disgusting? <clears throat> so what the problem? What exactly the problem? You Muslim, you say this is disgusting. Are you going to swallow your tongue? If it's disgusting in the Bible, is it disgusting in Islam or not? Or it's disgusting only if it's in the Bible? We will show you an example of the stupidity. You know, I saw some stupid, uh, even there's a guy who speaks Arabic. He says to me there's a mass murder order in the, in the Bible, and, you know, supposedly happened. This is because you are an ignorant. And as they say, you know, in China, he left like a donkey. He, he never came back as a horse. If you do a little search about this, you will see that this is not really something happened. Stupidity is amazing. Here in front of us, we have Muhammad riding people, killing them, killing a woman, husband, killing her brother, killing her father. And then he raped her immediately. And after a few days, because he liked her very much and he thought about it, she is the daughter of the king of those Jews. So it's good for me to have her as a wife. Maybe the Jews will accept me more. The same he did to Juria because she is the daughter of the sheikh of the tribe. So this person, he is not even marrying them because he is trying to fix his mistake. He is marrying them to use them. But the question was, and the accusation was, the Bible teach that you can marry or you shall marry your rapist. And this is disgusting. But your prophet, he practiced that. So why you don't keep your words standing there? Instead, look what the Muslim they say to us. This is Abdul, his name is Daily Lee. And he want to prove to us that we are wrong. Look what he said. He start quoting chapter uh, 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 22, verse about 28. Marrying your rabies, Bible, corrupt scriptures, expose a Christian, translate, and understand this is uh, forcible sexual intercourse, rape, Hebrew word, Tabash meaning captured, cut, lay hold, sized. Hmm. I mean, I never heard of a stupid person. He claimed that he knew Hebrew. You start, he start posting for us translation. And this is all the translation he posted. Translated as rape. You see here, translation, rape. And what make it more funny, actually, he is posting for us website. Did you even go there, you idiot? If we go right now to the exact original text, what we will find? This is the original Hebrew. Let us go to the original Hebrew. Give me a second. Where is the original Hebrew? Let me find it, give me a second. You see, always, in order to expose anyone, just go to the original Hebrew, and you will see right away what the original Hebrew. You know, we have, there is, there is a website, they give it to you word by word, not just a sentence, not translation, or even letter by letter. Even letter by letter, not even word by word. Let us see. <clears throat> All right. This is the verse as it is in Hebrew. This is not a translation. This is not a translation. 
So each word is there one by one. It has even a number. It has the meaning. It has the translation. And he sized her. Size her here, it means he have hold in her. You know, if a man, he want to sleep with the women. Have you ever heard of a woman? She say, hey, come, take me. You know, women, she would say, oh, no, come on, you know. And then he'd take her, right? You will notice, you idiot, just to show you that you are a certified donkey. And sorry to so use the word donkey with you. Look what you did. This is your own post. Not my post. Isn't it this is verse number 25 you posted? Okay. Hmm. What it says? If a man he rape a girl, he shall die. So how the verse after it, it says, if a man rape a girl, he shall marry her. Guys, do you see the stupidity? If the verse they are saying, if a man he rape a woman, he shall die. So how the verse after it says, if a man he rape a woman, he shall marry her. He die or he marry her. <laughs> yes, you understand what I'm saying? It says already, if a man, and he is the one who is posting, this is the, the donkey himself. We're supposedly trying to get us busted. So we have a page, and the page have a law. And this law says, okay, if a man he rape a woman, that man he shall die. The verse after it says, the man, if a man rape a woman, he shall marry her. So he marry her after he, he, he's going to be killed. Stupidity is amazing, what I can say. And the dummy, he is the one who is posting this, not me. I mean, thank you for helping me. If you have little brain, you should notice that this is going to be true. If he rape her, well, the case of rape already, it says there, if a man he rape a woman, he shall die. As simple as that. So obviously, the second case is not a rape. Because already the case of rape is described. And sizing women, sleeping with them, even if a woman, like, you know, we are talking about people who lived thousands of years ago. You know, when, when we speak about what we are reading, do you know how, how long we are going on time? Guys, do you have an idea? Just to give you an idea how long we are going on time. We are speaking about thousands of years. When they speak, those people, they have a law like this, at that time, people, they used to each other. Not long time ago, actually, people, they used to each, each other. We are talking about more than four, sorry, 3,500 years ago. And imagine how organized the society is. You know what I'm talking about? We are talking about a time when nobody have a law, and rape is not a, a crime. I mean, you rape, so what, rape? The, the strong, he raped the weak. The strong, he steal from the weak. Nation attacked nation. They enslaved them, all the nation. The Jews, they took them like goats. All, all the nation, they took them as if they are goats. So we are talking about time where everybody lived by the sword, and there is no law. So you are criticizing a law which is fit perfectly to solve a problem exist thousands of years ago. Yet in the Quran, when we read the Quran, we cannot find one verse in the Quran about the punishment of rape. The Muslim, they say to you, no, no, there is a verse. It says, the one who do mischief and cut his hand, coward liar. That is not about rape. 
that is about using weapon. If you use weapon against anyone and you cause harm for him, that is mischief. And if the rape happen, if the rape happened with the weapon, then you can use that verse, and all the scholars agree. Because then, by using weapon against someone doing mischief, man, then you 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 know you deserve that punishment. But there's no punishment in the Quran for rape. The whole word rape never mentioned actually once. Imagine we have Muhammad who came six hundred years after Jesus. And we have Musas who exist thousand of years before us. Yet he have a law for the rape. Here you see the the hatred of the Muslims for our book, and they are so desperate. In the same time, you shameful people. If you are a people of honor, then it doesn't matter who do that, you should dishonor him. So let us say for the sake of argument, the Bible says you marry the one you rape her. So how you praise the man who rape women and he marry them? If this is disgusting, The second you show them that Muhammad did that, they will say, oh, it's okay. I saw a video actually, he says it's disgusting. It's really disgusting how you force a girl to marry a woman, he rape her. This is disgusting. Well, this is your prophet. Just don't say Muhammad did it. He's a sheikh with a, with a, with a long beard. By the way, I did not post in the other channel that I'm going to go live on air. But, you know, I said whoever here, no problem. Another guy, he posted for us, saying that in the Old Testament, there is a mass murder, mass killing. You know, people, they are dummy, stupid, and there's nobody want to read. Do you know that? There's, you know, like there is books explaining the Bible very well. History. If you search for like a minute, you will find that many, as an example, here we go. This is an article I just found. A number of case, uh, cases of mass killing apparently at God uh, behest are recorded in the Old Testament. The flood in the book of Genesis. The cities of the plain, Sodom and Gomorrah, Genesis 18 19. The Egyptian firstborn, the Passover, Exodus 11 12. The Gentile under Moses and jo Joshua, number 21 2 3. And, you know, and the rest. But if you do a little study, you will find that this is not really, uh, uh, the, the Jews, they did not do that. <laughs> oh, there is a mass murderer. There is a mass killing. There is, a, you know, like read, like, you know, read, you will see the explanation. And you can read it and you can understand better. So, the appearance of the text that is an order to kill and to slaughter and etc. You know, uh, like when Jesus, when the, when the Muslim, they say Jesus, he says, bring them in the front of me and slaughter them. Huh? Jesus is slaughtering people. But this is what Jesus is speaking about in a parable way about what would happen to the judgment day. He will come as a king and those who disobey him, they will be punished. But he did not, this is, did not happen yet. So when, when you try to, you know, to, to, to attack a religion, before you open your mouth, you better read it. Otherwise, people will laugh at you. There's things that happen, and there's things never happen. There are things, they are even just a vision. 
I remember once they asked me, what kind of Bible says smash the head of the babies? It's a guy praying to the enemies. And he says they're the same as they did to us. They smashed the head of their babies. He did not even do it, the poor guy. He's crying from pain. He's a weak man. Praying, God smashed the head of the babies. But in fact, if you go in the Quran, you will find that the one who smashed the head of the babies for real, it was the prophets of Allah. If you remember the story of Al Khadr, while he was walking, he found a child. And this child, he did nothing. He was playing with kids. He was just playing. playing. He's just a kid. Al Khadr, by the way, is nothing but a fiction story written long, 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 long before Islam. If you go, if anyone is familiar with the story of the legend of Gilgamesh, you will find at that time speaking about a one a man who do search for the fountain of youth or the fountain of life. He drank from it and he became internal, eternal. He don't die. And that is Al Khadr. He drank from the fountain of life. Muhammad the fool, he took the story, he put it in the Quran, he make it as real story and Allah, he told him the story. And this is additional proof that Muhammad is a fraud. Yeah, we are not saying that the Jews did not go in war and they did not kill. This is not what we are saying. But people, they speak about, I mean, you see, in order to understand the Jews, who are they? You need to go back on time and see how they live. Everybody attacking them. Everybody want to take them. Everybody want to rape their women. Everybody want to enslave them. So those people, they are in a survival mood. Actually, even today, we are in the year 2020. If imagine, imagine, if a Greece is alone, how long is going to take Turkey to rape all the Greek women as they did before when they took the Constantinia? Right now, Erdogan, he's trying his best, but then he found that France is standing with the Greece. He found that the Trump will not the Greece alone, so he back up like a puppy. But if a Greece is alone, they will eat them alive. Small country, tiny country. Those things happen today. Today. The videos of YouTube, they are still there of Muslims raping and kidnapping women in Syria and Iraq, taking them with the chains in their hands. Today. So they throw at you what they have. We are talking about the Jews who lived thousands of years ago. We are talking about Muslims who live today. Israel is backing Turkey. This is not a true. Israel is helping Turkey with arm. Israel is backing Turkey with technology. All the drone Turkey has is an Israeli technology. Israel is backing Azerbaijan in their war against Armenia. So don't tell me Israel is backing Greece. This is not true. This is absolutely not true. The Israeli always, by the way, they take the wrong side. They never took the, the, the right side. Never, never. Never in their life. In the past, in today, and tomorrow. Even when they vote, they vote for Democrat in USA. The Jews in USA, they, they vote for Obama. If you don't believe me, go check it out. They always take the wrong side. We are not defending somebody because he's a Jew. We are just speaking the truth, what happened. All right? 
you know, uh, some people, they are like, they are obsessed with Israel. Like the second you say Israel, you have to say good things about Israel. You know, Israel is not doing a really good job. They never took the right side. Never. And count my words. Now they sign a peace agreement with Israel, right? Emirat and soon Bahrain. Just see soon, Netanyahu, he will pray with the Sheikh of Emirat in the mosque together, worshiping the same God. Just wait. They will claim both that they are worshiping the God of Abraham. Both of them, they are lying to each other. You know, the Muslim, he knew that he don't. And the other guy, he knew they don't. And yet, okay, let us pray to the God of Abraham. <laughs> I support the right, my friend. I don't support a country. I support what is right. So if you ask me, do the Jews have the right to have their country is called Israel? I say, absolutely, this is their land. But if you ask me about the government of Israel, I see half of it is corrupt, starting from Netanyahu. If there is no Russian base in Armenia, Turkey and Azerbaijan would eat Armenia uh, in two days. Maybe, I don't know, if you see, if you demand, always when a person, he depends on others to defend him, I think this is the biggest mistake. You see, Israel, the only smart thing about them, they don't depend in America to protect them. They have already enough power to teach anyone how to behave if you try to attack them. And this is what all those countries should do. Armenia and Greece, etc. What if those friends did not show up? You know what I mean? Has it happened to you before that you have a fight and you look behind you, you found nobody, all your friends is gone? <laughs> you know what I mean? Never depend in someone else to protect you. When you go in a fight, you count only on yourself because you don't know really if they will stand with you. So if you can make it by yourself, then you go for it. If you cannot, then don't do it because many, they will run away. All right. All the weapons of Israel has is, uh, has come from America. It's not true, my friend. The Israeli have a big involve in the American technology, which means a lot of technology we have in USA is Israeli technology. So it is the other way. Actually, maybe you do not know that the first one who made the nuke for America, they were Jews, which means the one who 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 made America victorious in the war against Hitler. It was the Jews. Maybe you do not know that, right? Yeah, yeah for sure you do not know. Uh, <clears throat> it's not America protecting Israel. No, it's not true. America, I'd say, it's a heavy duty friend to Israel. But the one who protects Israel is always Israel. When the last time America involved in war to defend Israel never happened. They don't. They can send you some uh, extra airplanes, whatever, you know, but they don't go in war for your sake. Nobody will go for war for the sake of anyone. Anyway. <clears throat> uh, so here the story in front of us about Al Khadr. He saw a child and then he killed the child. If you go and read the interpretation, you will find that the interpretation is saying, and this is again, chapter uh, 18, verse number 74. Let us go and see the interpretation. You will find that thus this supposed Muslim prophet, his name is Al-Khadr, he smashed the head of the baby. He hold him, he keep hitting his head with the wall or the floor, and he smash his head with the rock. But Muslim complain about smashing head. There is a guy in the Bible who says, God smashed their head. He did not even do it. He's praying from his pain. Horrible. How the Bible say that? This is a man saying that.
So it's okay as long it is their prophet doing it. It's not okay if a man, poor man, making a prayer, say God smash the head of their baby as they did to us. So they left and after leaving the ship, make their way on foot, enter when they met a boy who had not yet reached the puberty plane with other boys. Uh -huh. Among whom his face is fairest. They didn't like, he did not like his face. And he, Al Khadr, slew him by slitting his throat with a knife while he lay down, or tearing his head off with his hand, or by smashing his head against the wall. I mean, what a horror movie. When you show this to the Muslims, you say it's okay. But a guy saying God smashed the head of the baby in the Bible is awful, disgusting, ugly. You know what I mean? Here we see the hypocrisy. What happened? So you made a challenge for us saying that the Bible is saying that a man who marry a woman, sorry, a rape a woman, he marry her. This is disgusting. Why you don't stand with your opinion? How come the second we show you that your prophet, he is a rapist, and he married uh, some of the women he raped, not all of them. The second you show them that this is what your prophet does, that, or does, they go, they go in, 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 uh, uh, in denial. So this is always what we see from Muslims. And then they say to you, look at this translation of the Bible. Look, how come Muslims, we show you translation of the Quran, you say it's wrong. The Bible translation can be the same. I can make a translation too. You can make a translation. You, you as a Muslim, you can make a false translation and print it and post it. And you can sell it. This is why we Christians, we have to approve or disapprove certain translations. Because translation became commercial business. You make a book. Translate the Bible supposedly in nice cover and you make a price for it. You promote it and then people buy it. You it's a business But there's books which is approved and there's books which is not As an example international version. This is the new one translation the first uh, uh, Year two year there was tons of verses are missing. They are gone and The translation is really horrible you can find tons of videos in YouTube about how, how bad this translation is. Trans, as an example, the Bible translation in Arabic, it is one of the most horrible translation ever. To the point, the translation used the word Allah instead of Jehovah. Can you believe it? <laughs> so what about you come to me, you say in your Bible, it says Allah, I will say to you, I spit on that name. This is a false translation. This is not my Bible. My Bible is the one who say the name correctly. We cannot find this name in my gospel, which is not a translation. So, so any translation does not fit with the original translation is not a good book. The Bible is so clear. Anyone who come with other scriptures other than this, he is devilish, he is satanic. We have a kid here, he keep coming. His name is Yemen Warrior. I mean, this guy is Yemen Warrior, but he never joined war. There's a war in Yemen, but he is in YouTube. Hmm. Always when you want to see a translation, there's an easy way. We have websites, they show you the exact word one by one. And it's very organized to the point it have numbers. Even you can pronounce it, like here, Nara. Translation, young woman, who is a virgin. You do not know how to say the word, they can even pronounce it for you. So, even the letter is translated as a letter.
And we have the Jews. I mean, go to the Jews and ask them, the rabbi. They will laugh at you. War is against principalities. What principalities? What war is against principality? What does that mean? War is not against any principality. Because war can come upon you, not necessarily you go to war. Which means you can be a person sitting at home and a bunch of gang, they jump from your window and they have guns. So who said that war is against? You have to defend yourself, my friend. And actually, every moment in our life is a war. A war between the right and the wrong. The truth and the false. The lies and the truth. War against temptation. War against the deceiving. I mean, all your life is a war. From the second you are born to the second you die, you are in war. The only time you will have peace when you die. As long as you are alive, you are in war. Uh... <clears throat> Anyway, uh, do we have anyone have a, any question? So this is how you see how Muslims, they get so angry from you for sharing them what they have. They try to throw their garbage at you. The second you show them that this garbage is your garbage, they get upset. <laughs> you know, this is the truth. <laughs> This is the truth. Yeah, you know, war is, you know, uh, our life is a chain of wars. You see, even 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 your body have a defense system. There is a war. Every second day, there is a war inside your body. There's germs that try to get in. There's bacteria. You have an army inside your body. They they fight with them the same you see in the movie. They come with the sword, like chick 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 chick. You know, kill him. Yeah, this is a bacteria. There's a bacteria here. Come over. It's a war. As long as there is evil and good, the war always there. Don't they teach you in school? There is a white sales. <laughs> What those white sails do? Those are your soldiers. So even, you know, we have war on bacteria, war in germs, war in COVID, war against crimes, war against drugs, war against deception, war against uh, uh, fam family break, uh, divorce. I mean, you name it, your life, all of it is a war. Not to mention a war with your mother-in-law, which is the hardest. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, no problem. You see, when the Muslims get angry from sharing with them what we sh what what they have, that's a good sign. That's a good sign, honestly, because you see, when you hit the nerve, the pain come, which is good. You hit the nerve. So what you expect? <clears throat> and what make it more difficult for them, by the way, that we answer them from their own logic. You see, usually Muslims, they are not used to such a thing. They go to a Christian, he, they say to him, okay, the Bible says this, so, so what the poor Christian he do? He start explaining the verses, it doesn't mean as you think, blah, 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 don't do that. Show him from his book that he have what he is saying. In a second, he will flip upside down. As an example, uh, 
how many times we heard Muslims saying that the Bible is corrupted? We hear it every day, right? The Bible is corrupted. The Bible is corrupted. Your book is corrupted. Okay, hold on. What a Christian he do when he hear this? Let us say you are a Christian apologist, and you are now going to answer a Muslim. What the Christian they do? Oh no, we have thousands of manuscript. We have a don't waste your time. This is how you answer Abdul. Abdul is different. Different. Uh, <laughs> it's coming from different galaxy. This is how you answer him. You say, okay, so Allah, he sent the book, it's called the Bible, and you are saying to me, the Bible of Allah is corrupted. Thank you very much. The second you say that to him, he don't want to talk about the topic. Bye-bye. I mean, how stupid the accusation is, because Muslims are not the same as the Hindus. Hindus don't believe in Allah, don't believe in the Bible, don't believe in gospel, don't believe in the Torah anyway. But you as an Abdul, who claim that Allah is the one who sent the gospel to Isa. And then you say to us that the gospel of Isa is corrupted. Who is the stupid here, you or me? When a Muslim he say that the gospel which Allah he sent is corrupted, because remember, he's not talking, he's talking about your book is the corrupted book, I mean, is the, is the corruption. But he is saying that the Quran, the, 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 the book of Isa, which Allah he gave to Jesus, it's called Injil. That one is corrupted. So what's my problem? Agree with him. Say to him, yes, the book of Allah is corrupted. In a second, he will start crying. He will change the topic. He don't want to talk about it no more. You know what I mean? Why you want to waste time, your time? Here we go. And look how stupid even the Quran, the author of the Quran. The Quran called the book of Jesus Injil. Hmm. Allah, he is quoting the Greek name? I thought Jesus was sent to the Jews. So his book should be in Hebrew. Why the book of Jesus called Injil? Any Muslim can tell us? Ah, I will tell you. Because the donkey Muhammad, he was copying what the Christians at that time, they say he never heard of any other world. So he claimed that Allah, he sent down the Injil. If you ask Muhammad what Injil means, they do not know. What Torah mean, he don't know. Actually, here we go. We are here. How many Muslims we have? Uh, God, uh, uh, did I say God knows? No, we cannot say that. The Shin of Allah only know how many Muslims are listening. Okay. How many of you Muslims knows what the word gospel mean? According to Islam. No problem, Leslie. You know what we can do. I mean, we, I don't keep my videos for long anyway. They can spam. Any Muslim know? They don't know. Okay, what Israel mean? They don't know. What Abraham mean? They don't know. They don't know. <laughs> what Isa mean? They don't know. What Maria mean? They don't know. What Amran mean? They don't know. They don't know. Muhammad do not know. Allah don't know. You see, even when Muhammad, they ask him, they said to him, what is the spirit? Why are you scared of the Talmud? I am not scared of the Talmud. This is not my book, you idiot. You see, this is an example of the stupidity of those who call themselves Muhammadan. Why you are scared of the Talmud? So why you don't accept the Talmud yourself? Are you saying that the Talmud sent by Allah? Say it so we can laugh. You idiot is stupid. Your God never mentioned that book. So why you want me to accept it? Me too. Do you see how stupid you are? Your God Allah, the Shin, he mentioned the book of David, the book of uh, uh, Abraham, which I don't know where it is. Where is the book of Abraham? Do you Muslim have it? The Torah, the Gospel, the Psalm, the Zubur. Okay, where is the Talmud? Did Allah mention the Talmud? No. So obviously you are a donkey. You think the Talmud is a book of God when even the Jews agree. This is a book of Shish, Kabbalah, Falafel. It's a magazine, you idiot. 
The Jews, they have a magazine. This is what the Talmud is. So your foolishness is beyond imagination. So you are saying to me, are you scared from the magazine? Huh? And actually, most of your story, your prophet story, is, is taken from that magazine. Like the punishment of the grave. Or what about Muhammad? He heard the Jewish women saying that most of the punishment of the grave is because of piss. Have you ever heard of a smart prophet like your prophet? Piss. So Allah will not torture me because I rape a woman. He will not torture me because I may be a child molester, or because a thief, or because a criminal, or because a rape, whatever, you know? But if you have some urine, brother, on your foot, Allah will torture you in the grave. Genius. Just because a Jewish woman, she said that, Muhammad, he took it, he put it in his book. This is your magazine. Aren't you scared of the magazine? It is you who is scared from the Talmud, not me. Can you explain to us, I will open Skype just for you if you dare to call me, how in the world that your God, he is obsessed with urine. He will punish you because of urine. He will torture you because of urine. But yet in the same time, he order you to drink urine. Urine sucker. I advise you to change your name to Uranium. Actually, if you do COVID test, they will find 99% of you is camel urine and 1% is COVID virus. Why you don't accept the Torah? I mean the the the, the Talmud yourself. It just this is just remind me another stupid thing the Muslim they say to you. There is a book. It's called the Book of Barnabas. Okay, do you accept it? No, we don't accept it because it's stupid. But this is the true Christian book. <laughs> so they don't accept it themselves, and they say this is a true book. I mean, have you ever heard of stupidity like this? But look how Islamic logic work. Islamic logic work when they speak to someone he's an average, you know, a normal human being. He does not know much. A person he go to work, a lady she is busy with her life, maybe uh, uh, you know she have kids or uh, uh, you know a, a young girl she don't know much, uh, you know they take advantage of you when you are ignorant. As simple as that. The second you are educated and you have a very high speed computer in your head, in the same second they will flee. What is the mood, Mr. Prince? Search it in Google. Prophet Google will tell you in two seconds. <clears throat> Ask yourself, if you have a little intelligence, how in the world there is a God, he will torture a human being in the grave because of urine. I want to know. Just to show you, how stupid this 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 idea my friend every second in your, your life you have a urine inside you so what the difference between urine coming out touching your skin outside and urine is inside you it's the same you know what i mean the urine is touching you either way from inside or outside so why does God, he will punish me for accident? Like I, nobody would have, would have shower himself with his urine. I mean, okay, the guy is pissing. <laughs> so some urine touched his foot. And now this, oh, oh, look what it did. Allah will torture me now. Allah will, you know. Do you remember the guy we play his video about shaitan? He play with your anus. If you don't say the prayer. This is Islam, superstition, stupidity. You have to enter the bathroom with your left foot. And before you enter the bathroom, you have to say, A'uzu billahi min al-khubti wal khaba'ith, etc. Prayer, you have to say a prayer. Thank God that the Muslims are not taking over the bathroom in the airport. 
Because if everyone would enter the bathroom, he have to say the prayer, and then he enter with the left foot, and then he have to say By the time they finish, we will miss the airplane. And if you don't enter with the left foot and you say the prayer, Shaitan he go inside your anus and he block it and he play with it. Oh boy. Actually, one of the most hilarious hadith of Muhammad, when he said that when a Muslim he pray, Shaitan take hair from his anus. I would love to see a YouTuber Muslim make a live stream with the camera behind your anus. And trust me, many they will watch the miracle of Shaitan taking hair from your anus. Who wanna prove that this is true? Who is the brave of you? And you know, guys, imagine, I mean, Shaitan taking hair from your anus and he will not stop until he make you fart. And he hear it and he smell it. Not only he make you fart, like it have like to come like, you know? And then Shaitan, ah, now we are, now bingo, we are good. And then he will leave you alone. What is this, man? This is a prophet of God. So we go and see Jesus is speaking in the mountain, in the mount, and then we find Muhammad is speaking about shaitan playing with your anus, shaitan taking hair from your anus, shaitan sleeping in your nose, shaitan pissing in your mouth, shaitan he laugh on you. When he, brother, Allah, he hate the one who do sneezing. Have you ever heard of a God? He Sorry, he hate the one who do yawning, not sneezing. He loved the one who do sneezing. <laughs> Once I opened a chat room uh, in Paltok, it's a program, it's called Paltok. Uh, it's called, uh, let us sneeze for the sake of Allah. <laughs> the Muslim went not. I mean, come on, what, why you get upset? Allah, he say, it says, indeed, Allah love the one who do sneeze, and he dislike the one who do yawning. What I would do with this now? And the funny, by the way, guys, just to show you, I'm not going to show you the hadith because I have, I, have a, I have a reason. And I will show you later. There's an article about how Prophet Muhammad, he fought an advice about COVID-19 1400 years ago. Okay. The Prophet, he said, when one of you, he sneeze, cover his mouth. When he yawn, cover his mouth. How the Prophet, he knew that this is a health issue, you idiot liar. Your prophet, he asked you to do that because he claimed that shaitan, he will jump inside the opening. <laughs> so they cut the last part of the hadith. They say the prophet, he says one of you, one of you, he do yawn, uh, put your hand in the front of your mouth. And Allah, he hate those who do yawning. So look how they changed the whole story. Shaitan, he jump inside your mouth when you do you now. You, you, you. Allah, he hate me now. You have cold, Allah love you. Hmm. You know how I imagine Muhammad? He's like a silly, stupid idiot reclining in his ass and he's thinking about something stupid to say. Brothers, listen, my followers, Jibreel, he told me that Allah, he loved those who sneeze. Eh? Actually, there's a hadith. It says that if, a, if your brother, he sneeze, uh, uh, say to him, uh, uh, Allah. may Allah have mercy on you, because suppose you die, according to the fiction. And then if you sneeze again, say to him again, but if he sneezes third time, that's when he have a cold. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> I'm going to die laughing, but just wait. <coughs> and then the Muslim, they will say, Allah killed him laughing. Allah, whatever brother. <laughs> Christian Prince, he died life on air laughing, brother. Allah punish him, brother. Allah punish him. <laughs> Abdul, we will die anyway. You idiot. <clears throat> so, 
CP is back. I never left. I was just busy with Jibril. He was giving me advice. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy don't lose your voice I'm not going to lose your voice I can I can sing for you let us sneeze for Allah let us sneeze mashallah let us sneeze don't fart for you are scaring her have you ever heard of a prophet he hid garlic the one who eat garlic or these plant cannot enter our mosque. <laughs> Why? Because garlic offend the angels. <laughs> Why the angel? The breed is a Dracula. Why we cannot eat garlic? Do you know that garlic is very healthy? Someone is asking me, what do you do for a living? I live. Do you? <laughs> My friend, a person like me, it's very easy for him to do anything for a living. I will give you an example. I live in America. I have the green Islamic law. I speak Arabic. Do you know how many big, 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 big company organization they can hire me in a second just because of those things? You cannot imagine. So don't ask me what I do for a living. None of your business. What I do now is exposing and spanking Muhammad. Actually, this is what I do. I spank Muhammad. What do you, what do you want more? <laughs> you love garlic? Shame on you. What if Allah now he punish you for loving gar garlic? Sorry to tell you, you cannot enter the mosque of Muhammad because you eat garlic. <clears throat> My question, CP, why you, they don't want to debate with you? The answer is very simple. You see, your reputation speed you. I will tell you something about when I was a, a kid. The first thing the teacher, he come to the school, he do, he say, he, he mentioned my name. He say, who is this guy? Stand up. He said, listen to me. Don't think I am the same as the other teacher. You cannot do to me what you do to other teachers. And all the students, they say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the teacher is new in the school. He knew no one, but he heard about this student in that classroom. So he's giving a warning. Don't do it to me the same as you do to others. I'm not like the rest. So this is what the Muslims are. They don't dare. Otherwise, who is holding them? This is what the first thing the teacher he do when he come to the classroom. Who is this guy? Stand up. Listen to me. If you think I am like the rest, I am warning you. I am totally different. I will teach you how to behave. Never do that to me. I, uh, I did not say anything yet. I did not do anything. What this guy is talking about? Your reputation speed you, my friend. Hmm. Yeah, precede you. Thank you for correcting my English, Sarah. By the way, Sarah, in case your English is not good, I am the one who taught Shakespeare how to write his book. Actually, Shakespeare is my uncle. He was an Arab, and his real name is Shakespeare. <laughs> Al Qazafi, when he was making a speech in, in Libya, Actually, this was, I think, in Kenya. I, I forgot, like in Africa. They made him the king of Africa. He paid money for all the leaders. You know, crazy man. So he said, in fact, Shakespeare himself is an Arab. And his real name is Shakespeare. Like, what the heck? Shakespeare is an Arab and his real name is Shakespeare? <laughs> And he continued and he said, and the word democracy is coming from the Arab, which means democracy. Demo what? Democracy, which means bring the chairs. The <laughs> Yos, <sighs> you want to challenge me in what, my friend? Are you a Muslim? The Yos? Your, your name sounds like a Greek, so how you want to challenge me in what? Hmm. 
some something fishy. Maybe you are joking. Yeah. I made your day. Oh boy. Don't say that. The Muslim they will accuse you saying he is they are saying Christian Prince is God. He is the creator. <laughs> English is funny. Oh, you made my day. I mean literally by the way, English is funny, like running nose. First time I heard this word like running nose. What does that mean? How in the world the run the nose is running? Ah, just let it go. English. <clears throat> Any Abdul? You love me? Oh boy. I'm sure you don't mean it. <laughs> what do you think about preservation of the Quran? I believe the Quran is preserved letter by letter and word by word, except <laughs> what Allah said, that Allah will cause the Quran to be forgotten and to be abrogated. I mean, it's very funny, the Muslim, they say the Quran is preserved. When the Quran says, no, it's not. Isn't it the Quran said? That any of our revelation we cause to be forgotten or to abrogate. We will make something similar or better. Even the Quran says we will make it forgotten. <laughs> and which make it more funny, he says, Nun siha. Nun siha? What the heck? Wama ma nansahu min ayatin aw nun siha, na'ti bi khayrin minha aw mithliha. Any verse of our revelation we cause to be forgotten. I mean, what kind of a revelation? Hey, brother, did you hear my revelation? Uh, uh, what revelation? I forgot to tell you, I caused you to forget it. <laughs> the word God in Arabic actually is not Allah, Ilah. Ilah is not an Arabic word. You see, all those words, there's nothing is called Arabic. Arabic is not a language by itself. Arabic is a collection of languages. Most of it is coming from the Arabic. So when we say Ilah, it's not an Arabic word. Let me explain to you. In the Bible, you will find that the word, there's a word, which is Il. Il. So that is the word we are talking about. <clears throat> oh, we are typing in Arabic, sorry. That is the word God. So when you say Ilah, you are saying the God. The God. That is not a name of God. And that is not Arabic. And that is not even Hebrew. That is Aramaic. <clears throat> all right and here actually you see that Muhammad and Islam is based on other belief when Muhammad he called his angel Jibreel Jibreel what is the last two letters in the word Jibreel Eel So how Allah have 99 names or 99 words attribute to Allah, but none of them is ill. And then Jibreel is an angel. He belonged to ill. You know what I mean? Israel, Mikael, Israfil, Ishmael. There is, you know, those, I told you, there's nothing, it's called Arabic. So there's many words, all of them, they are not Arabic, like Rab. Rab, it can be found in the Aramaic, it can be found in the Hebrew. Don't you say Rabbi? Rab, Rabbi, that is God. You can find it in the Quran too. Rabbu had al bayt. Or Arbab. وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّي رَبِّ See it? This is not Arabic. 
This is a word mean Lord, God. So there's many words, none of them is Arabic. <clears throat> Arabic is not Arabic, just to make it simple for you. Arabic is not an Arabic language. Actually, I believe strongly that the first Quran was written in Aramaic language, not in Arabic. Any other question? If there is no word for our, for God, well, I just told you, that's what we use in Arabic today, but I'm saying to you, those are not really Arabic words. I don't know, you keep going, there's no Arabic. I told you, there's no, there's no language is called Arabic. You see, many of you do not know that Arabic have a huge impact in mankind history. As an example, what is the numbers you see in English? You see those numbers? One, two, three, four, five, you know, <clears throat> the numbers are the Aramaic alphabet. Alif is one, two is B. The Aramaic, they have a very unique system, super intelligent nation. So the alphabet itself is numbers. Which make it very unique and make it very complicated at the same time. Which means it's full of mystery and excitement when you read it. I do many insult. Well, you are a Muslim who call me a pig and a monkey and a donkey, and yet you talk about insult. Do you have a mirror at home? <clears throat> CP has a PhD in comedy. No, my friend. You see, for you, what is comedy is me saying something you were not expecting. That because I have a very fast processor. Do we have any, any other question? You are making a fraud by using Arabic for your own interest. Uh, Ali, Raza, Zif, Zirfa. <laughs> Let me ask you, Mr. Ali. Did your God Allah, he learned Arabic from the Arab or he is the one who created the Arabic? Guys, listen to the answer. The Muslim now is, is going to get me busted. Let me show you what Ali, Ali is upset. Shame on you. Shame on you. You know, Ali, I hope you are not like one of those guys who put uh, makeup in their face. I mean, the shame on you here sounds very weird. Shame on you. You are making fraud by using Arabic for your own interest. Can you explain to us from your dictionary what does that mean exactly? And what is that icon in your picture? Is that a mullah? Are you one of those mullahs who decorate a kid and he dance bachabazi? Are you one of them? <clears throat> Once uh, a Muslim girl, she was so upset from me. So she sent me an email. She's saying to me, so what if your voice is so sexy? I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. And I said to myself, that's a lot of hate. And look like Ali is one of those. He's like Zachary Naik, he's sexy and he know it. So Ali, are you going to explain to us how I'm using my uh, the Arabic for what? My, for, why, fraud, what? How that can happen? I mean, can you explain to us? I'm getting confused here. <clears throat> Do you ever have in-person debate that would be awesome? Trust me, it's not going to be awesome. <laughs> That will not be awesome. <laughs> Actually, if you want to learn Arabic, I have, an, I have a channel in YouTube. It's called Arab for Christ. And I have full uh, 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 cl you know, class for many class 
to teach you from the zero until you know how to read and how to write. <clears throat> All right? So if you want, you can go and you can watch and you can practice. So what happened to Ali? Ali is there. What happened to Ali? Ali, as long as you are a person who talk about Arabic, can you tell us what the word here? Look, I see here the word Abraham. Can you tell us what Abraham mean? Mr. Uh, who is a Muslim? You Muslim, you say Ibrahim. What is Ibrahim? What, what does that word mean? Anyone? <clears throat> Can you explain some verses? Virus in the Bible? You mean verses or virus? <laughs> People are funny. Supposedly he's insulting. You make me laugh, my friend. You have no idea you're talking to. Arab for Christ. Arab for Christ. Lisa, she is posting the link. You can go there. You can start from zero. It's for free. You know, I taught Arabic for free. And <clears throat> all what you need, you can just practice. Actually, I made it. I, I did it. I did the, the teaching which is not really fit what they do in school. You know, in school they have to go by rules, etc. I make it very simple. So easy to understand, so easy to practice, so easy to learn. Stop to use Hebrew. Hmm. Uh, verses, okay, no problem. Well, my friend, we have our brother, his name is Sam Shamoon. If you have any question about the Bible, go to him. For me here, I am in charge of Muhammad. I talk about the Bible sometime, like we just did, but it's not really my topic. And I will tell you why I don't really speak too much about the Bible. First, my English doesn't help me. The Bible need, it's very sensitive, not like the Quran. Quran is a stupid book. The Bible, if you say the word, you know, my English is limited. So if you say a word which is not really uh, the right word, it can be a change and different. In the case of Islam, because I see the words in Arabic, so I know the original meaning. And then the translation here next to it doesn't make any difference for me. Uh, there is an Arabic translation, but I need to search for it, which is good. But there is many translation. The one they listed in the website, most of them, they are not good. Arabic is difficult, is almost like Chinese. Not really. <clears throat> if you know the basic, if you learn the alphabet, then the rest is very easy. But I tell you, the grammar is hard, yes. But who is, I mean, you do not need to be professional. Even those who they are, they live all their life in the Middle East, they speak Arabic, even Arabic teacher, they make mistakes in a grammar. Okay. Did Prophet Muhammad own slaves? One of his title was a slave seller and buyer. And for sure he have slaves, he have tons of them. Famous one as an example, Bilal. Married the cook who he raped her always her cousins, etc. Uh, any other question? Birthday, Sam Shamoon, today is his birthday? Oh, okay. I never celebrate my birthday, by the way. It was not a good day anyway. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Why you are in America? Are you scared? Sure, I'm scared. Why you are not in America? Are you scared too? Are you scared from Trump? <laughs> uh, let us see. Can you explain explain about tomato? Tomato. You mean tomato? I'm not sure what you mean.
Hey Ali. Okay, Ali, I want to ask you, as long as you know the word of fraud. Ali, you are a Shia, as I'm assuming, from the Sheikh you have in your icon. Let me ask you, when Muhammad he says to you that you can let your sister or your daughter rent herself for a one night stand or two hours, is that a teaching from God or this is a fraud? Ali, be honest with me, how much your sister she make a day? By the way, I'm not insulting, by the way, I'm not being rude. This was the Shia practice. And this is what Muhammad taught. And this is in the Quran. And every Shia defended the verse four, chapter 4, verse 24. So don't think I'm insulting. Actually, in Iran, they have offices, like, you know, real estate office. But this is for Muta. The sheikh there, you call him. You say to him, I want to have Muta. Do you have any girl for me? Prostitution office. Run by sheikhs. I challenge you to say I'm not telling the truth. <clears throat> Debate a real Muslim? Exactly. I'm looking for one. I could not find until one a person. All of you Muslim, the second we debate you, you deny the teaching of Islam because you are ashamed of Muhammad. Therefore, I cannot find a real Muslim. All right. Faridi, <laughs> Farid. What is the proof? Would you show Sunni they believe in muta marriage? Okay, read my book, Sex and Allah, and you will find that the Sunni and the Shia both they practice the same thing. But the Sunni, they are hypocrite. They change the name. As an example, the Sunni they have something called zawaj friend. From the name you can tell the word zawaj in Arabic means marriage. Friend is an English word. It's like a boyfriend girlfriend. So what do you do? You have a girl, you want to sleep with her, but you are not ready to get married. So what do you do? You marry her, but you have sex with her once a, a week or etc. in the hotel. You don't live together. And she is your friend. If you don't like each other after a month, two months, it, you divorce her, send her a text message, that's done. So they say, and you have to pay her too. Or there is a marriage, it's called the marriage of a monsieur, or the marriage of a traveling. Let us say you are going to a country for or a city for three days, four days, or a month. And Allah forbid you from sleeping around. So what do you do? You ask the hotel if they have a girl, she can marry you for the time you will stay in the hotel. <laughs> or there is a marriage, it's called a student marriage. Let us say you are a person who want to go and study in Indonesia. So you ask a girl from Indonesia to marry you. You fool her. You tell her, I want to marry you. And then when you finish your school, bye-bye, you divorce her. So Muslim Shia and Muslim Sunni, they practice the same thing because women for them is a sexual object. It's a sexual object. So they have no shame in doing all of this. <clears throat> Explain Islam, alcohol, drunk, activists, activists, activities. Well, first of all, you notice that Muhammad, before he forbid the alcohol, he was a drunk man, and the Muslims, all of them, they were drunk. And the, what make it more funny, uh, the Quran praise alcohol. Allah, he speak about the, uh, about alcohol as it's a great sign from Allah <clears throat> it's what it's a sign it's a miracle chapter 16 verse number 76 in that point Muhammad he was in love of drinking then Muhammad when he is dying he can't drink no more then he come with the idea everybody is drinking he can't drink so he forbade drinking. And the verse in the front of you. <clears throat> and by the way, here you see how the translation is false. It says that from the fruits date, uh, uh, of date palms and the grape vine, the river sugar and hold some food. It doesn't say, you see, you see the coward? Do you see the cowards? The word alcohol is gone. Suddenly, it is sugar and wholesome food. Change the translator. 
coward, they have no dignity, no honesty. What happened to alcohol? You see, why we don't find the old alcohol no more? Here we go. Even this guy, by the way, is lying in the translation. He took it and he put it between two brackets. He translated the word alcohol as being drunk as a strong drink. It doesn't say that. Nowhere the word is a strong is mentioned and nowhere it mentioned as a drink. It says sakaran. This is the word in Arabic. Sakaran, which means drunk. Sakaran or is a qan hasanan. It's a great for being drunk and good wealth. So here the verse praising the Quran, praising the, the alcohol, praising back black label. Change the translator. You will notice how the translation changed depending on the translator. This is why when you read the Quran, you have to be careful. <clears throat> if you are a person who do not know Arabic, all their translation is deception. Not a single translation I saw, it was honest. Actually, there's a translation of a guy, one guy, but he is not in this website. Let me see if I can find him. His translation a little bit better than them and the Muslim, they hate him. His name is Dr. Muhammad Ghali. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. Okay. Quran.com. Let us see. Uh, So if you notice here, <coughs> uh, this is Quran.com website. This website have options to add more translation, right? This is Sahih International. But look, even Sahih International, it says, you see the word? Do you see it? Let me zoom in. How come in the other translation this word disappear? And how it can be, something will make me toxic, drunk, yet it is good provision. And how that is a sign from Allah. At that moment, Muhammad, he was trying to make people who they are gang, drunk people, to join him. So he stopped praising alcohol. <clears throat> Did I answer you, my friend? Yeah, actually, I need to take a, maybe a, not, not a vacation. I mean, vacation, let us say, from going live on air. Because going live on air is, is taking too much of my day. And when I finish, I don't feel like doing really writing anything. You know, to do writing, you have to be, uh, I mean, your mind has to be clear, think about nothing. It's not just like you go and sit and you start doing it. <clears throat> ah, good to drink water. Eh, this reminds me when Allah, he says, and we made it from the water every living thing. But the idiot he forgot that he said that Allah created the angels from light and the genie, he created them from fire. <laughs> oh boy. You're welcome, my friend. <clears throat> All right. Anyway, guys, if you always you like to, to follow us, uh, to know that we are going to go live on air, always subscribe to my Patreon. And Patreon is not necessarily you are going to donate. You can still do no donation. Subscribe there. This way you can follow us when we are going to go live. You will receive an email from Patreon that the Christian friends is going to go live. For sure, we appreciate those who support us. Always your support is a blessing and it is needed. 
However, our service is always for free and it's for the poor before the rich. So you donate, you don't donate, still you get the same thing. I'm just telling you, I treat no one different. The one who donate, yes, I want to say thank you for helping me donating. I appreciate you, but I don't treat people differently. Simply for me, all people are the same. There's people they can help. There's people they cannot. I love them all. Same time, the Lord, he knew the heart of the person. He knew who can help and he, or he would to help if he can. And he knew the one who can help and he don't. So, uh, what do you do is between you and your Lord. And what I do is between me and my Lord. However, my service is for free. <clears throat> so I want to say thank you. I really appreciate you to be here. Uh, I hope one day I will be able to finish the translation. Drink honey to my throat, not caramel urine. Are you sure it's honey only? What about caramel urine, no? I thought caramel urine would be better. Yeah, because sometimes I see people, they ask me if we subscribe in Patreon, do we have to donate? No, you don't. Actually, most of those who they are in my Patreon, they are they don't donate even a dollar. This is why you see a big number, you know, of people who subscribe, but they are not really people who donate, right? Most of people actually who listen to me, they are poor people from Indonesia. And actually, this is why I make my time early in the morning, my time, so Indonesian people, they can join us. Did you notice? So I can say most of my service is to the poor who they are in South Asia. That's why I gave my books to them for free. Totally for free. Not because I'm rich, but because I love those people. I know they are poor. So which one is important for me? To make some money or to give my books for free for those lovely people? I gave it to the Russian, Malay, <clears throat> Albanian. I know those countries, they are not really, you know, they are poor. Uh, so, what we have? We have Russian, Malay, Indonesian, uh, Albanian, uh, Serbian, and a Polish, Polish book. Serbian is not published it yet, soon I will publish it. Uh, so, I mean, what I can do more, right? Uh, <clears throat> هم أولى من العرب yeah let us see no I'm not saying that so people will say thank you I'm just telling you I mean I do my best and the Lord always provide to me I never actually I never worry about about tomorrow because always the Lord he opened doors God is good my friend you put your trust on him, you will never fail. And you know, he never he never let, let me let me down. Never. I, I don't I don't get worried. I know. I mean uh, anyone who makes books, his number one target is to make more sales, right? And actually even the translator they say to me, Why you don't sell the book? Why you wanna give it for free? I said, What's your problem? <laughs> You know, one of them, he said to me, you don't understand, many people think if you give it for free, they think it's not a valuable book. And he's right. People, when they see something for free, they think it is nothing. You know what I mean? But at the same time, I said, well, there is people like that. But there is people anyway, they are poor, they cannot afford it, and they would love to read. So why I want to judge by the one who think that he will not buy, and obviously those who have the money, and by doing that, I will not allow the one who have no money to get the book. <clears throat> and now we have an army of Christians around the world who they have a lot of reference, not only tens of thousands of videos I made and hours of my life, recorded life on air, but we have books in their hands. So sooner or later, 
this person, Christian Prince, he will die. But my friend, my books will stay with your children for generation and generation to come. I bet you, if, let us say the Lord, he come after a thousand years, two thousand years, we do not know. Those books will stay in the internet forever. Until the Lord come. How beautiful that is. I will be dead. I will be dust. I will be demolished. But my book is between the hand of someone is young learning the truth. That alone is a joy. That alone is like being in heaven. So I do my best and then the Lord he said you shall know them from their fruits. Hindi language actually there is a person he now he spoke about he is going to do an uh, Bengali language I don't know if what, this is what you are talking about he said Bengali so he started and he's working it so I don't know when it's going to be ready when we have this book ready I will publish it for free too all right uh, Yeah, but you know, these days, like, I mean, books is uh, is the internet. Um, I mean, this is the easiest way to, to receive books. Uh, actually, the internet make my life different, to be honest with you. If not the internet, how am I going to be talking to you? You know what I mean? Even my books, actually, is possible because of the internet. As an example, I live in America. I, I don't have access to the physical books. I have my own library, but it's a small so how I can find all those books? There's tens of thousands of books. It is the internet. So the internet gave me a great deal of access to books, which is impossible for me to have. To like, I I I I have tons of stories and a hadith and things in my head, in my memory. But when you make a book, you have to write the page number. It's not enough to say it says that. You know what I mean? When you write a book, you cannot say in Islam it says that. People they need to see where, which page. Imagine we show Muslims which page. We give the number and still they accuse us of lying. Look like I'm using, I'm losing my internet. I hope not. You know what I mean? We show the number. Did you see the the Muslim? They make a video. The introduction of a Christian prince and sex and Allah, it cannot be found. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> and I promise, if he can find it, I will do apologize. And then we got them busted. It's there. All right? So, you cannot make a book by saying it is exist. This story exists in such a book. You have to give the page number. You have to give the story number if it has, has a number otherwise people they will be all over you right this is why the internet is extremely important for the work i do uh, when it comes to research and finding you know reference uh, even i knew i knew it it's in my head but still you need the internet to get an accurate numbers and reference otherwise and by the way all the numbers you see in front of you like here in the hadith those are not accurate you see if you go to the book the Arabic book you will not find those numbers like here it says uh, English reference book number 40 hadith number 2746 and then it says Arabic reference book 43 hadith number 297 this is not true when you go to Arabic reference you will find different numbers depend in the print depend in the version depend in etc and maybe many of you do not know like when the Muslim they say as an example Sahih al-Bukhari there is no there is not such a book al-Bukhari does not exist you see this is al-Bukhari they claim this is a book made by al-Bukhari but nobody have a book for al-Bukhari those are book claimed that al-Bukhari said this but nobody had his book You 
You know what I mean? Look, all of this. The guy, his book is not exist. Same as Sahih Muslim. Nobody have it. The same as the Quran. Nobody have the Quran. Look at this. All of those books. And the funny, the Muslim, they say that this guy, he was memorizing all those hadith in his head. Who in the world would believe such a garbage? One person, he memorized all those thousands and thousands of hadith, word by word, letter by letter. This is why I believe that Islamic heritage is a chain of, let us say, uh, collection of stories made by many people. I, I will show you an example. <clears throat> Narrated Aisha, she said, that one of the wives of Allah, Apostle, joined him in a tikaf, and she noticed blood and yellowish discharge coming from her peep, you know what the word, <clears throat> and she put a dish under her when she prayed. I mean, how in the world this story is published? Aisha, she went to a guy. Look who is reporting the story. Haddathana Qutayba. Okay, Qutayba is a guy. Haddathana Yazid ibn Zuraya. This is a different guy. So Qutayba, he heard it from Yazid, the son of Zuraya. He heard it from Khalid. Who is Khalid? We don't know. He heard from Ikrama. Who is Ikrama? We don't know. We heard from Aisha that she said, But this guy, Al-Bukhari, he came almost 200 years after Muhammad. So in order for him to receive this information, he had to count names fit for 200 years, period. So we can hear it. You know what I mean? Secondly, who in the world wanna believe that a woman, her name is Aisha, she went to a guy, his name is Ikrama, and she told him, one of the wives of the Prophet, she have a drop of blood coming from her vagina. And she put a dish underneath. doesn't make sense, right? <clears throat> First, this is stupid. Secondly, disgusting. Secondly, this is not a, something to publish. What is this? Or the prophet used to kiss me and suck my tongue. Or the prophet he used to put his private thing between my legs when I have menstruation. I mean, if, if Aisha really, she was reporting those things, she is a very horrible woman. Especially Muhammad, he said, that a woman or a man who say what happened inside the house, he is a bad person. Imagine Aisha, now she have Instagram, and she posts this. One of the wives of Allah Messenger has joined him in Itikaf, and she noticed a blood yellowish in this charge, and from her private part, he put a dish under her. When he pray, she pray. Breaking you, breaker, what is that? What is this? And then a guy who came 200 years after is reporting this. Look at this, all those stories. <clears throat> uh, Sneaker Corner is good channel for historical. Yeah, well, you know, all of you, you can, you see, all of you, you can join the mission with us, Scott. The issue is how much education we have. But even if you have little education, you can start with the little. It's like building a house. 
You see, many people, they cannot afford to build a house in a month because they don't have enough money, right? So what they do? They start doing the base, putting some rocks here, some concrete there when they have money. And then they slowly, they build, they build, they build. It might take them two years, three years, four years, five, but at the end, they will have a house. This is how knowledge function. Nobody will receive a house from the first day. It's going to take you a lot of work, a lot of time. If you ask me how you became who you are today, I spent my life reading. And since I was a kid, I spent all my time, you know, like, yes, I was very active kids, I, you know, but I used to read a lot. I used to walk almost 45 minutes to a big library. And in the library, they have a section for children and section for adult. I cannot get into the adult. I hate the children one. There's nothing there but Mickey Mouse. Magazine with pictures, cartoon, stupid, at least for me. So what I do, I used to wait until an adult when I get inside the adult library. So what I do, I walk next to him as if I am his son. Now the guy, he will look at me like, what this kid is doing? Why is he working with me? And when he entered the door, there's a guard. But because now I'm walking with him, the guard will think that I am with this guy. So it's okay. I cannot ask for a book, but I can sit in the table next to that guy. So I go and sit next to him. This guy will look at me like, why this guy, why this kid is following me? <laughs> then I sit next to him and whatever in the table as a book, because people, they leave, they leave the book in the table, I grab it. This is how I used to learn to read. I go to the adult library and any book is in the front of me. I start reading it. Actually, one of the funny story happened to me. <clears throat> uh, once I grab a book, it's about sex. Oh boy. I was reading things like, what is this? <laughs> I think I was like maybe nine years old or, <laughs> or 10 years old. <laughs> oh, really? I, actually, I cannot, I cannot forget that day. You know, it was really horrible. I was so upset. I was so... <laughs> uh, you know, because I used to read a lot, so my, my reading improved so fast as, a, as, as for a child. Uh, and the more you read, the more you learn, and the more reading change you, you become a different person because you speed your people who they are in your age in the knowledge. So while kids in my age, they were playing with the football, I play, I jump, I swim, etc. But still, I love to read. And I'm very glad I did. <clears throat> yeah, you should see that day when I hold that book. I was reading things like what they are talking about. <laughs> I went home. And I wanted to ask my dad questions about what I read, but I was afraid he would ask me, where are you learning this from? You know, I don't tell him I'm going to the library, by the way. It's far away. I Like, suppose I'm going to play with, the, with, the, with kids in my age. So I want to ask questions about what I saw today in that book, but I will ask who. <laughs> yeah, anyway. <laughs> Um, any question before we go? You know, try to make, if you have children, try to make them love to read. And to read something, uh, like when you are a child, there's things that are beautiful for a child to read. As an example, stories, which is uh, fiction stories. Fiction stories are, by the way, they are very useful because they can improve the imagination of a child. And imagination, imagination improvement can improve the intelligence. Because simply, you are building a format of images to establish, let us say, a movie maker in the head. That you're thinking. So such a books can be very, or sometime. Uh, so in the beginning was, things about fictions. Then I start reading books about crimes, like, uh, you know, solve crimes. And those supposedly, they are not meant for a child. They are meant for people who they are like in their 20. But those are very good 
to make a child start thinking from an early age, enjoying, like let's say, uh, uh, adult way of solving issues, because it's a crime, you need to solve it, how this happened, who's behind it, there's a question, there's an answer, there's investigation. So there are certain books can improve your child mind, but you need to be careful that not every child is the same. There's a children's, such a kind of books doesn't fit with them. You have to, you know, be careful about the gender too. What good for girls is not good for boys, you know? Boys, they like action, etc. Girls, they like more, you know, the Barbie, romance, etc. So everyone have uh, something to improve him. So you have to feel each one of them what is good for their age and their gender. But when they, they pass the point of gender as kids, then you have to start feeding him with the, with the books which is going to improve their intent. Today, sadly, they play a lot of games. Games are very good, by the way, to improve, let's say, your uh, uh, fast action. But it's programmed, which means there's nothing new. You know that the steps, so you are just doing a step after step, you repeat the same thing over and over and over. So it became boring and it is stupid. But when you read, you improve your knowledge, you improve how much information you have, you improve your language skill, you improve your ability to explain, and you improve your ability to be a logical person. Reading is very important. However, reading doesn't work with everybody, which means, as they say in China, he left as a donkey, never came back as a horse. Which means if the person is not qualified to be a horse, he would never be one. No matter how many books you give him to read. All right? Um, <clears throat> I was a little girl. I love a prince's little story. Yeah, you see, there's stories when you are a child, they stuck in your head because you love those stories, right? When is my birthday? I don't know because my mom, she did not tell me. She never celebrated. <laughs> she told me it was a bad day. So, <laughs> By the way, I never celebrate a birthday. And I believe, this is my belief. Don't, don't be upset if I say to you my opinion. I believe it is silly. And let me explain. Now, you might be a person who celebrates birthday, so I'm not saying you're a silly. For me, it sounds like a silly thing. Okay, let us say you are born in January 1st. Do you know that this day will never be repeated? Not only, literally, even your calculation is wrong. Because every few years, we have to correct the calendar. So you are missing the date. You are not really born next year in January 1st. It's going to be a different day. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Anyone understand what I'm saying? So let's say your mom, she told you, you are born January 1st at 6 o'clock p.m. And then you celebrate every year January 1st, 6 p.m. But this is not really the day. It's not January 1st. <laughs> Uh, think about it. Yeah, but anyway, I believe if you are a person who knew how to be happy every day in your life, so if if the if the reason to celebrate something is to be happy, why don't make every day a day of happiness for you? Be fun, laugh, be happy, overcome your sadness. Don't take you know don't make stress you know take over you. Have a birthday every day. Actually, I remember there was a child, he's very smart. He used to call all his uncles saying, hey, next week is my birthday. They said to him, what is it? Last week was your birthday? He said, so what? <laughs> he liked to get gifts, you know? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I have a friend who celebrate his birth by celebrating his mother because it is they she gave yeah what i mean if you are a person seeking happiness if this is what the point is be happy all the year not once a year you know what i mean 
Uh, I don't know. I mean, for me, I, I see the world in a different way. I believe every day is a special if you make it a special. And your birthday can be a horrible day if it's just a day, you know, cake, or people come and eat. And I don't know. For me, you see, even people when they make like, let's say somebody get married, what they do? They invite people, etc. Spend a lot of money, party. I, for me, if you ask me, this is silly. The money you want to spend for the party, you can take a vacation from work, you and your bride, and spend the whole year going around the world. Which one is better? You know what I mean? <clears throat> You spend a lot of money to feed people who will talk about you. They will gossip about you. And what the, is the point of this? Marry the girl, take an airplane, go from place to place. The same money you want to spend for the stupid party, which you spend in two hours, spend to take a vacation, you and your bride, go around the world. Let us say maybe it's going to be enough because some people they spend a lot of money for those things. It might be enough even to go for six months around, you know. So be smart and live smart. Or you die as a fool. People, they buy things, they spend things. You see, in my account in the quality of life, do you know why YouTube, they, they did not allow me to receive donation no more? Because I keep saying to people, don't buy those things. Don't spend, this doesn't work with YouTube. How they want to add advertising in my page. And yet I'm saying to people, don't buy. <laughs> You know what I mean? Hey, Dili, how are you? My Bible is corrupted. Dili, did you hear my answer for you, you idiot? I like you, Dili. So, guys, look, Dili, he just came. He just woke up. And Dili, he just said that your Bible is corrupted. Dili, just to show you how stupid what you just said. Isn't it the Bible is the Bible of Allah? So, how you say my, my Bible? As I know that the Bible is sent by Allah. So, what you are saying to us, that the Bible of Allah... Is corrupted so the Lee is making fun of Allah saying that Allah is a stupid fool he sent his books and he cannot protect it how dare you D. Lee? here we go chapter 3 verse number 3 says that Allah he sent the book which is approving the Torah and the Angel which is between their hands so how you say it's corrupt you stupid are you accusing Allah of lying so the Quran confirmed the Torah and the Injil are not corrupted. In the same time, it confirmed that this is the book of Allah. So you are making fun of Allah, saying Allah books is corrupted. <laughs> you know, have you ever heard of somebody giving a finger to a God? His name is Allah. Today you heard that. You are the one who is giving a finger to your God. Because you just said, your God, Allah, he sent the book, it's called Injil, and many people, they give him a finger. Thank you for that. Join the club of fingering Allah. I mean, I cannot believe that a Muslim is insulting his God, saying his God, he's in the book, and his book is corrupted. <clears throat> the verse in the screen, yeah, it says, نَزَّلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ وَأَنزَلَ التَّوْرَاتَ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ He sent to you down the book, by the truth, approving, believing in what is between his hands. Between his hands. No, Dali, the one who could not protect it is Allah, as you see. Allah is the one who sent the gospel. So you are saying Muhammad lie, it's Elohim, not Allah. <laughs> At the same time, if it's Allah, if it's Elohim, he sent it and it's corrupt. How do you stupid God in the Quran says confirming it? Do you see it says confirming it? <coughs> this is your stupid translation saying the word confirming and they are taking off the word between his hands. So how you idiot you say such a thing? Uh, no, Dominique, I'm, I wasn't saying that. You get me wrong about books. I was talking about you as a child. 
there's there's a there's a point of building knowledge and there's a point of being a fool let me explain to you I'm talking about when I was a child I spent a lot of time reading because when you are a child you are just an empty computer your brain is empty so you have to fill up the space of the empty brain with the right material then when you grow in the age then you are already mature with knowledge what happens usually people after they get old then they will learn about how to love a person too late the process of learning about how to do things is when you are young not when you are old when you are old already the fingerprint is all over your head you as a person is there is developed is like a tree you try to move it from its place when it is big and huge and have deep roots so you think reading a book when you are old would change the roots no the change happens when you are so young not when you are old the only change can happen to you when you are old is learning from experience not from a book because then you go to a second stage of let us say learning it's called experience okay we have people here they are just coming to insult so admins you do not need my permission to send them to Allah shipping and handling No, the Muslim they say Jesus he dies so he cannot be God, but according to Islam Jesus never dies so he must be God as in Islam. <clears throat> anyway, you know you can believe that you, when you are old, you can read a book and the book can help you in something. Why not? I mean it can help you, but most of books is written uh, supposedly for adult. It's too late for the adult. To practice what is written in a book because you is already you this is why I say you know if you want to make a person make him when he is a kid you see most of people they commit a crime they commit a crime because sadly they have a bad mama and bad bad daddy so a kid he steals something they say to him bring more here we go we created a criminal you know so you want to create a good guy you do that when he is a kid when he's an adult it's too late he will learn he might correct himself but it's going to be by experience not by books he go to jail he will be humiliated he will suffer a lot and then from his suffering he might, let us say, earn some redemption and change. But it's not a book will change you. Right? Volume 9, book number 9364. What is that, uh, Dili? What is that ninth, uh, what this hadith you want me to show you? Is that something you like, like me to talk about? Do you like to call me Dili? You sound like an intelligent person. I like intelligent people. They are real these days. Do you like to call me? I can open Skype for you. What do you think? <coughs> Hadith number 6114. Okay, let's see. I'm trying to find this hadith you are asking me to. 
Well, I search for it here. I don't know. Can you post? Uh, can you tell me the hadith in Arabic, uh, Mr. Dili? What do you want from that hadith? What this hadith is about? Preference to the reversed standard version. Yet King James version has defect. <laughs> My friend, uh, first of all, uh, King James is a translation. Secondly, you are a stupid fool. And I will tell you why. I challenge you in front of everyone to accept one translation of the Quran. Is that fair, guys? And I challenge you to tell me that your translation is not defected. Any translation you choose. And my duty is to get you busted into a second. So either you apply translation rules in every book, including yours, or you don't apply it. Secondly, forget about translation. What if I show you different Qurans? Even your prophet, he said, Allah, he sent seven Quran. Are they defect? Where is the seven Quran? Where is the verse about stoning to death in the Quran? Where is the verse about breastfeeding for adult ten times? Is your Quran today is defect? Foolish. In the top of that, when you say to me the Bible is corrupt, here we go. Allah is the one who sent the Torah. Allah is the one who sent the angel. So your God is a stupid God. He cannot protect his book. So simply what you are accusing us, you are accusing your God. Because at the end of the day, this is not my book. This is the book of Allah, supposedly. So how is stupid this Allah? He cannot protect his own. Just to show you the stupid Quran, the stupid nobody can change the word of Allah. And then the Muslim they say to us that no, you didn't change the word of Allah. <laughs> How Allah He said this. Look how many verse. Chapter six. Verse number 115, chapter 6, verse number 34, chapter 10, verse number 64, chapter 18, verse number 27. All of them, they say, nobody can change the words of Allah. And you, you say to us, no, you Christians, you did change the word of Allah. <laughs> So what we learn from this, that Allah and Muhammad is a fraud. Because either nobody can change the word of Allah, or people, they can change the word of Allah. So which one we will believe? You or Allah? <clears throat> Are you there? Are you dead, Dilly? Dilly, as they say in China, he left as a donkey, he never came back as a horse. And I don't think they were talking about you. I think you are born as a donkey. Which means, it's not metaphorical, it's literally about you. So the stupid you is coming all over us, saying your book is corrupted, when the Quran says nobody can change the word of Allah. And if we ask you, is the Injil is the word of Allah, you will say yes. Is the Torah is the word of Allah sent to Moses, you say yes. But the Quran says nobody can change the word of Allah. Hey Hamoud, listen Hamoud, I think your wife, she's cheating on you already. You are spending too much in the internet. Take a hike. You are like the Prophet Muhammad. He spent his life cannot have kids. Why? Because he don't go to bed. He sleep under the bed. <clears throat> no, actually, donkeys are very smart. I don't know if I, I tell you this story before, right? 
once we went to the mountains and there was you know we were a bunch of kids teenage uh, so the villager he said how you will come back you would you will get lost in your way so he said take the donkey with you i said what he said take the donkey and when you want to decide to come just let him lose and follow him and guys you believe it or not we we are going in the mountains we have no idea how to come back and this donkey not only he took us home he took us on a very short cut <laughs> unbelievable we were walking all day and yet this donkey he chose the shortest way to go home and he is a donkey so when i say a donkey it's not necessarily you know donkey are not really stupid animals actually they have special gifts you know and this is an example i mean it just he, he, the, the the villagers he was sure he said just let the donkey go and follow him whatever you are just let him go you know and the donkey took us home shortcut not only he took us home he took us in a shortcut Muhammad forbid the writing of a stony verse in the Quran abrogated in eternity. You see how stupid you are? How you can forbid the verse? It is in the Quran. <laughs> how you can forbid writing Quran if it's abrogated? How you can forbid writing it? And what the point if you are following it? Are you following the verse? Yes, so why you don't want to write it? <laughs> it's like a guy making a law, says, don't cross the road when the red traffic is on. And then he says, don't write the law, just to practice it. Why? <laughs> uh, <laughs> The verse says nobody can change the decree of Allah. No, you idiot. It says words. It's in the front of you. Are you going to say to me this is a wrong translation? Say it. Say it. Where it says decree? It says words. None can change his words. Where is the word decrees? Donkey. And this is the word in Arabic. لا مبدل لكلماته كلماته where is the word decree? Donkey. And listen, donkey. Do you accept the interpretation for the verse made by donkeys from the same religion you have? Or those who they make interpretation for the verse are donkeys like you? And you don't like them? Choose an interpretation, and I would accept it. All of them, they say it's a word, not decree. However, as long as you mention decree, just to show you how stupid the decree of Allah. This is your prophet saying, that Allah, he made a decree for you about how much adultery you will do. And you are the one who spoke about rape, you remember? So according to Islam, if a man, he rape a woman, Allah, he made a decree, he will be a rapist. <laughs> Unbelievable, so beautiful. Look at this. Who is the one who makes somebody rape somebody? Allah. Read it. I think you are a stupid machine. Copy paste. You don't know what you are talking about. Do you see the hadith? And this is Sahih. Let us see the hadith. <clears throat> I'll go to the screen in a second. <clears throat> Do you see the hadith? Aren't you the one who talk about rape? Based on this story here, your prophet saying a person he raped because Allah he made a decree for him. And you are the one who said nobody can change the decree of Allah. So if Allah decides you will be a rapist, you are a rapist. Read carefully. Verily Allah has fixed the very portion of adultery which a man said shall will indulge in and which he of necessity must commit. Do you see it? Are you there? 
So when a man he rape a woman, he must rape her for Allah he decree for him to be a rapist. And he decree for him he will rape who, when and how. Should I go in details? Coward. Roasted without without oil, without a fryer. Actually, this, this story here in front of us alone is enough to prove Islam is stupid. Because the, the, the point of justice and the point of heaven and hell is gone. Why I will be punished for a decree Allah forced me to do? You know what I mean? If Allah is the one who wrote for me a fixed por a por por portion of a portion of adultery, which I must, it's a necessity to commit. Why I will be punished for what is of a necessity I must commit? Have you ever heard of a stupid religion like this? And remember, D. Lee, he is the one who says, the Quran says, nobody can change the decree of Allah. That make it more horrible now. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, sister, my dec the decree of Allah is this guy who is going to rape you, okay? You remember the women who called? Just go, just go. Don't come here again, Billy. You are just a stupid kid. By the way, watch the beginning of the video. I spank you badly about the translation you posted. You are a donkey. There's a woman, she called the Sheikh live on TV. Live on TV. And she said to him, I'm getting the, the, I don't know, she said 35 something or 30. And uh, I did not get married yet, so I'm worried I will not be able to find a husband. The sheikh, he said to her, daughter, don't worry. The prophet said, maktubun ala kulla farjin ismuna kihihi. It's written, excuse my language, on every vagina, the name of the one who will if it. Life on air. For sure the women now she felt more better because here we go, Allah have decree. So nobody can change the decree. So if somebody would put it there, excuse my language, it means it's going to happen. It's written there. I'm sure now the women, she went to the bathroom and she took a mirror with her. Trying to find the name. Good luck with that. I wonder if a woman, she is a prostitute, how many names are there? <laughs> My friend, she will have a yellow pages there. Unbelievable. Let us start with the letter A. <laughs> it is written there? Really? Okay, I got an idea. Let us say you are thinking about to marry a girl. You like her, but you are not sure she will be your wife or not. What about you go and ask her, hey, can you please check for me is if my name is there? What do you think? Mm. And then she will check and she will say, well, you know what, between the 200 names I found there, I could not see your name, so. <laughs> what a stupid garbage religion, unbelievable. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, I better stop. I better stop. You guys, you hate me. Don't you hate me? How many of you hate me? Be honest. <clears throat> you know, I was away for four years and I came. Uh, you know, my mom, she opened the door. She said, It's you? Me? You believe it? Mother, she see you after four years and she did not get excited for seeing me. It's you? I said, yeah, mom, it's me. Actually, she did not recognize me because uh, <clears throat> I shaved my beard. <laughs> so she was saying, is that really you? <laughs> Even my mom, she could not recognize me before. You believe it? Unbelievable. Oh, boy. <clears throat> yeah, your name is written there. Don't worry, be happy. 
I'm so glad it's written in the front because it's going to be impossible to read in the back. I mean, think about it. <laughs> and by the way, when Muhammad said it's written there on your private part, the name of the men who will sleep with you. I mean, why Allah, he wrote it there? It's just a question in my mind. I mean, why he did not write it, let us say, in your hand? I mean, uh, I mean, there's many places in your body, you know, that you can put that too anywhere. Why there? I mean, what is the fun about it, you know? <laughs> oh boy. We better stop here. Your love is contagious. Oh boy, they will accuse me that I am behind COVID-19, like, like a Trump. Trump is behind the global warming. The fire in California is because of Trump. <laughs> I mean, when you hate somebody, if anything happened, you have to blame that person. It doesn't matter. <laughs> the global warming. Global warming is because of the guy, he don't even smoke. What the global warming? What he did? What, what did Trump have to do with the global warming? If you want to understand the global warming, I can explain it to you better than anyone, any scientist. The Prophet Muhammad, he explained it. It says that each time a Muslim, he pray, shaitan, he fought. Now, think about it. There's 1.4 billion Muslims. And they add some numbers to the numbers I gave. If every Muslim shaitan he when he hear the Muslim he prays shaitan he fought. Do you know how much that affect the global warming? So now we knew the reason of a global warming. Read with me. Prophet Muhammad said, when shaitan hear the call to prayer. He turned his back. Look at the imagination. He don't fart right away. No. Stop. He turned his back. I mean, look at the comedy. <laughs> okay, okay, the Prophet Muhammad, I'm so excited to this, to hear the rest of the story. He turned his back, what he do? He turned his back. And he break the wind. <laughs> exactly. What is your name? Channel. <laughs> the chicken is farting, but in this case, it's a shaitan. <clears throat> so as not to hear the call of being made. This is a certain way of a protection so that Satan will not hear the call of a prayer. So you can imagine how strong the fart. It have to be more strong than the speakers because remember in the old days, they used to have no electricity. Now they have big speakers in the Middle East. How big the fart of the Satan will be. <clears throat> That is the reason behind the global warming. So if the liberals, they want to blame Trump, they are not being really scientifically accurate. Don't Joe Biden quote the prophet? Can he quote this prophet in the next election day? <laughs> Imagine Joe Biden, he speak to the liberals. Whatever the liberals, whatever you say, nobody is listening. There's, there's one thing for them. Trump is bad. When I get, that's it. Even if you give them a donkey like this guy, Joe, Joe Biden. So imagine if Joe Biden, he says, Prophet Muhammad. He said, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, I need to stop talking. My, my throat is hurting. You can't tell, right? Maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow I will not go live. But this is the problem. I say tomorrow I will go live. I will I will rest my chest from talking. And then in the morning I say, my man, I can't miss it. <laughs> I can't miss this. Look at this break wind. I mean, that's you can't miss this. You wake up in the morning. The birds are singing. The trees are green. The cloud is so beautiful. What is missing in your life? Prophet Muhammad. So beautiful. 
you open the book, Sahih Muslim. When the Satan, he hears the call of the prayer, Shaitan, he start farting. So how beautiful. Now you make your coffee and you imagine the story. How beautiful your day is. You will spend your day thinking about how wonderful is Allah, who is the reason to burn the anus of Shaitan from farting, because the poor Shaitan, he have to keep farting non-stop. And that explain why the price of beans are increasing in USA, Shaitan is ordering Allah. He need beans. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, <clears throat> we cannot live without you. Oh no, come on in there. What are you talking about? You cannot live without the fart of shaitan, boss. That, that is something to believe. <laughs> oh. You know, once I was invited to a place. And there, a bunch of people, they start talking, claiming that they knew about Islam. The person who is with me, uh, <clears throat> said, please don't. Don't, don't, don't. And you believe it or not, I was in a church. And an idiot, he's, he's a bishop. He was teaching the Christians all kind of garbage. The guy next to me who invited me for this event, he was, he held me literally from my arm because I want to stand up. Please, no, come on, don't, please, don't, yeah. God, you don't, you know? And then he, like that said, I cannot take it no more. So I stood up, I said, you are a liar, and you are not telling the truth. Actually, I said to him first, uh, he, he was, he, he, you know, he said many stupid things, and I cannot take it no more. And then he said, uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad is from Ishmael. So I said to him first, where you get this from? He said, the questions are later. I said, I'm not asking you a question. I am saying you are a liar. You claim to be a bishop who knew the gospel, the Bible. Show us where you got this from. Everybody in the church was like shocked. You know, if you go in the Old Testament, you will find that Ishmael, his mother, she married him to an Egyptian woman. Egyptian women. So how in the world a bishop in a church, he said to those poor Christians who have no edu education that Ishmael is Muhammad, where Muhammad is coming from. So I told him, either I am a stupid or you are a liar. Prove one of them. And you should see the guy next to me. He's holding me from my shorts, down, sit down, act differently, sit down, sit down. <laughs> and then they escort me out of the church, which means literally I was kicked out. So what I did, you know, they can call the police for you. They are, they are in charge of the church, you know, they can say trespassing, that's it, we don't want him here. So I went home and I printed all the papers I have in my printer, whatever paper I have. I know it's going to take some time before they finish. So I put it some reference in a fast way in the, in the papers and I start printing and then I print, I don't know how many papers. I went to the front of the church. I found two kids. I told them I will give you five dollars now and five dollars later. Each one come out from the church, you give him a paper. <laughs> And I got him busted with no mercy, you know? <clears throat> uh, yeah, he's a coward, he's a liar, you know? This is, how, this is why it's not necessarily going to a church will make you listening to the truth. There's many deceivers, there's many liars, there's many corrupt people there. So you have to examine the person The one who invited me, because he knew, 
you know, I know a lot about the, the garbage of Muhammad. So he said to himself, this is an interest, interesting topic for you. I said, sure. They will talk about Muhammad and church. That's wonderful. Let us see. But I could not take it when they start, you know, teaching false information. <clears throat> uh, why Adam is not handicapped when Allah created him in his image? <laughs> Good one. You have a strong imagination, by the way. I'm going to hire you to work with my team as as a Zakir Naik assistant. <laughs> the person is being a him. And he's a lot of light. And I'm going to get him with it. You know, those Muslims, when somebody defends Islam, doesn't matter what he's saying, they support him. But in the same time, we as a Christians, if we hear that somebody have a PhD, or somebody is a bishop, or somebody is a priest, we take it automatically that he is a person, he knew what he's talking about, and he is decent. Never do that. The Lord in the Bible, you know, warn you about false teachers. The Bible says clearly that from us, us, from the believers, false people will come and preach different gospel. So be careful, my friend. <clears throat> yeah, I better stop talking too much. Anyway, guys, I want to say really thank you. I appreciate you all. And uh, you want to download this video, even though there's nothing much really there. Just I wanted to have a conversation with you. Feel free, you can download it if you want. But don't forget to download the previous videos we made <clears throat> today and yesterday. And I don't know the day before if it's still there. Uh, the day before, if you don't find it in my channel, is going to be in Patreon. There is a channel who download my videos, subscribe to them, so when you don't find the video I made a day or two days ago, you can find it there. <clears throat> uh, you're welcome, my friend. Happy birthday. What birthday? I don't know what, what day I was born. <laughs> You know, let me tell you, when my grandfather, he registered his kids, he went to the officer and he asked him how old the first one. So he put his hand like this, like let us say five foot. And he said the second one, he said like this. And the third one, like this. <laughs> so my mother, her sister, who is three years younger than her, she's registered older than her because she was taller. <laughs> oh boy, old days are wonderful, aren't they? Yeah, he's like this, and this one is like this, and that one is like this. So you write whatever you want, you know, like who is old, who is, uh, you know. And sometimes even it happened that if the, if your name is not so clear, it's male or female, they might register you a female, and, but yet you are a male. <laughs> like there's a guy, they never called him for the armed service. And he was wondering why he never been called. Because he's registered there as a female. <laughs> oh, welcome to the Middle East. It's wonderful to be in the Middle Eastern, isn't it? Yeah. The other day I was talking about... Uh, the city they are fixing the you know changing the sewer you know the sewage the cover they came they cut the whole concrete they make it perfect all of this is done in less than 40 minutes so clean so neat in the middle east there's a guy he took a picture next to a sewage hole open in the road when he was six seven years old and then he took a picture in the same place when he is 35 years old. Still, the hole is not fixed. <laughs> 35 years old. Six years old. Still, the hole in the street as it is. That is the Middle East. Isn't it wonderful? I mean, your memory is there. You cannot leave it. You will not miss it because simply it's there. It doesn't go. <laughs> Why are people saying happy birthday? My friend, it's not my birthday. What birthday? What are you guys are talking about? I never celebrated a birthday. I told you. I don't know even what is my birthday. 
Anyway, I better stop, otherwise things will go crazy. Thank you very much. May the Lord bless you all. And don't forget to take a picture of the sewage if you live in the Middle East when you are six years old. So you can take a picture when you are 35 next to it again. Nothing will change. It's going to be there, trust me. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Why, why is it not fixed? Because you called the company and said to you, Inshallah, tomorrow we will fix it. Inshallah. Allah is willing. And Allah never will. And will never will. Allah is a funny, is a dummy, is a, is a Barbie, is fake. This is why Allah, when, when Allah will, we will do it. When Allah will will, hmm, we are waiting for that. Thank you. God bless you. Christ is Lord. And see you soon again. Bye-bye.